Hey guys, so uh, I've been doing my homework here on this IFS conversion that we're doing on the 48 Chevy uh, P48 project. Um, everything's looking really good. Um, I now have a pretty good understanding of how uh, the front end geometry on these Mustang II suspension uh, setups work. So um, what I'm going to do today is trim and fit the upper coil pocket. Uh, coil bucket that mounts the upper end of the coil spring and also locates the upper control arm. Uh, so the gist of it is there's some good threads out there about Mustang II front suspensions and how to best fit them into your street rod. Uh, and I read quite a few different threads. I, I read a few different manufacturer uh, installation instructions and websites uh, and PDFs about uh, the geometry of these front ends and the, the best thread that I found uh, and what I'm going to go by is a thread by uh, El Polaco on the ham. Uh, it's a real popular one I guess for these Mustang II front suspensions. The guy's done a million of them and makes his own from scratch and uh, has a really good understanding of, uh, of building these uh, from his experience in uh, working at building street rods. So uh, I trust his opinion and I trust his uh, specs that he, he listed out. So I'm going to go with that and uh, hopefully this thing will will work and handle well. And there should be enough adjustment in that upper control arm to uh, set it to stock geometry if uh, we decide that that's the better way to go. So uh, everything's everything's laid out here. Uh, what we're going to do is set uh, our three degrees of caster, uh, which is the reason that the ball joint is offset on the lower control arm is so when the upper is uh, straight in line with the cross member, you have your three degrees of caster on the steering, steering arm. Uh, the anti-dive is between three and four degrees. Four degrees, I guess, is stock. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this upper bucket and it's going to lean backwards towards the rear of the car uh, with a half inch bias so it'll be a half inch higher in the front than in the back and that will give us our four degrees of anti-dive and what anti-dive does is um, through the A-arm geometry it allows the front suspension to feel more planted when you hit the brakes it doesn't doesn't dive that's what anti-dive is uh, uh, to when you're under braking to prevent the front end from bottoming out or, or uh, diving extremely so the suspension firms up and stiffens as you as you brake to balance out the ride of the car um, and also when you're cornering if you're throwing it into a corner uh, the anti-dive helps resist uh, the, the dive tendency on the outside corner uh, of the front end so uh, we're going to build that into these upper coil buckets and I had to take into consideration the fact that we're going to airbag this thing most likely later. Um, and with an offset or angled coil bucket, your airbag's not going to sit level. So um, that's something we're going to have to correct uh, with a with a airbag mount that's angled uh, so that it sits in the pocket and mounts the airbag squarely to the lower control arm. So we can deal with that later, and then. As I said in the previous video, if the, if the owner of the truck decides to go back to springs, then the stock geometry will work correctly with the, leaf, with the uh, coil springs. Uh, so I've got all my dimensions here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start uh, cutting these buckets up and getting them mounted. Um, the biggest problem I think I'm going to run into is with the rack and pinion steering. We're using a power uh, rack and pinion, and it looks like I'm going to have to notch the frame um, in order to uh, to clear the steering arms at the end of the rack and pinion. So most likely I'm going to have to C-notch uh, the frame uh, for that to, for everything to clear correctly. And that's something common with these front suspensions. If you have the cross member up high, tucked up high in the frame for a low ride height and for uh, additional ground clearance, which is how I have this set up, um, you know, you you raise that steering the steering mounting up into your bottom of your frame. So uh, that's going to take me probably an extra day of work to to uh, 
clearance for the steering arms. But in the end, we'll have a proper riding truck that uh, that handles well and the front end set up really well. We're going to set the rear end up as well with a four link. Um, probably a triangulated four link. I've got to get under there and look at clearances and see where we're going to mount cross members and whatnot to do that. Um, this stage of the project wasn't really supposed to be about suspension. It was supposed to be about uh, doing a motor swap and doing some wiring, but um, you know you have to you have to take these things as they come up. And we had the opportunity to do the front suspension while we were building motor mounts and boxing in the frame rails, so it just made good sense to do it all at the same time. So that's what that's what I'm going to do, and uh, I'll start cutting now. So uh, thanks for watching. Okay guys, here's an update of where we're at uh, today on getting these coil buckets. Uh, getting the upper control arm slash coil bucket into place on the frame. I've got them notched out, I've got the frame cleaned up ready for tack welding and I built a jig out of a couple pieces of angle iron, I'm going to show you that now, uh, and bolted it where the upper control arm adjuster slots are. I set it right in the middle of the adjuster slots bolted a piece of angle on the front between the two towers and on the back between the two towers. So I've got four bolts in there. Everything's straight, square, level, fitting good on the frame. Um, I'm going to double check all my measurements again real quick and then tack them in. So here's the setup I've got. So this is the driver's side bucket. I ran a piece of flat bar strap across the frame right on my lines for the back of where the bucket should locate on the back side of the frame measured off the center line of the cross member. So I ran that so that I could butt the bucket up against it. And these are my angle iron pieces that are running from bucket top to bucket top bolted through the adjusters on my center line which is right down the middle of the adjuster slots and the distance between the bolts is 28 so what that jig is doing is holding the tops of these arms in parallel to each other uh, and setting my distance so that they're parallel to each other and my distance apart is equal uh, between the buckets Here's the passenger side. And you can see if we look down, straight down the line, everything is right in line as it should be. And it's looking really good. So the last thing I did was check my level just to make sure and I don't know if you can see that but my bubbles bubbles dead nuts on well guys that's gonna wrap it up for today's video uh, today we you know, measured, measured and cut our coil buckets. Uh, we got the proper amount of anti-dive built into the upper control arm mounts, which are at the top of the bucket. Um, set all of our dimensions for our instant center, which is the angle of the upper control arms 
relative to the lower control arms and the center of gravity of the vehicle. Uh, got all that dimensioned properly, I think. And um, there's another thing that I'm going to do with this front suspension that I'll show you here in a second uh, that was suggested by El Palaco on the ham. Uh, and I think it's, it's definitely a must do for this front, front suspension. Back on here on the passenger side. Spindle looks good. Upper control arms located uh, right in the center of the adjustment slots here. Coil bucket in line with our lower coil perch. Everything's on center with the cross member. That's all looking really good. So I'm going to close the back of the coil bucket here. I'm going to close this area in with a plate and probably tie it into this area of the boxing plate and build my motor mount somewhere off of here. I want to keep the motor nice and low uh, in the chassis. Um, keep the motor low and as far back as I can without you know interference of the, of the firewall. Um, keep that center of gravity nice and low and, and far back for a little bit better handling. So in this lower control arm area of the frame, um, you know, we have a nice gusseted boss that the uh, control arm bolts to, but really it's, it's kind of hanging here in space on the back, uh, back of this cross member. And that puts a lot of stress here on the cross member. So what I'm going to do, what El Palaco suggests, is gusset... Uh, add, adding a tab here uh, that the bolt will run through, so an extra bracket that comes down off the bottom of the frame and then gusting that, so that any forces being applied here uh, will, will go straight into the bracket and, and into the frame instead of being leveraged on this mounting boss. So I think that's a great idea. That's a great, uh, great improvement to an already good front suspension, and um, I'm definitely going to do that. So once we get, um, once I get the motor slung in here, get that old transmission cross member out, that can come out now, um, then uh, I can figure out where the motor needs to go, uh, trim and fit the motor mounts into the frame here, tack all that in place, pull the motor back out, and then fully weld everything. Everything's getting welded. Um, then the motor will go back in and I will start fitting the steering uh, because the steering rack and pinion uh, is going to bolt to the front of this cross member and the steering shaft is going to have to fish up alongside uh, you know the motor. It's going to have to clear the motor mount and clear the header pipes and connect to our existing steering column shaft. So I'm waiting to do that and waiting to mount the rack and pinion until I get the motor um, positively mounted back into the frame. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, I'm going to have the motor in here by the end of the week and uh, maybe fully weld everything this weekend. It's going to be a lot of, lot of welding so um, I'm just going to do it all at once in one shot instead of doing it over a course of many days. So that's where we're at. That's the update. Uh, if you guys like this kind of content please like and subscribe and leave your comments below and I'll uh, try to reply back uh, as quickly as I can. Uh, if you have any suggestions or improvements please let me know now before I burn this stuff in. Uh, thanks for watching guys and I will post a link uh, in the description to the ham uh, and to El Palaco's thread about the Mustang 2 IFS suspension in case uh, you guys want to check it out. So thanks for watching.